C Corporation Accumulated Earnings Tax Problem 1. During a recent IRS audit, the revenue agent decided that Apple, an individual, used his closely held corporation Fruit Tree Inc. to avoid shareholder tax by accumulating earnings beyond the reasonable needs of the business. Fruit Tree Inc.'s taxable income for the year was $500,000 and it paid no dividends. Compute Fruit Tree Inc.'s accumulated earnings tax, assuming that it had accumulated $130,000 after tax income in prior years. Also, assume that the accumulated earnings tax rate is 20% and up to $250,000 can be accumulated without incurring the accumulated earnings tax. This is a very important problem. When you're looking at C corporations, remember that C corporations have two levels of taxation. The first level of taxation on a C corporation is at the entity level. Entity level. The second level is at the owner level. Now, what some entities, C corporations, what they do to avoid taxes is they do not distribute out money where the owner level tax is basically, they, they try to avoid it. They basically try to completely eliminate the owner level tax and make it just the entity level tax, just one level tax. And the idea of the accumulated earnings tax is. Businesses that have no legitimate reason for doing that, which in this problem we're told the IRS did a recent audit and they determined that the shareholder was avoiding basically the second level of tax by accumulating earnings beyond the reasonable needs of the business. So like if let's say there's some public plan in place where the business is trying to save up money for expanding their operations or building a factory or something where the, the actual or technology, you know, growth businesses where, where technology and growth is important. And the technology industry is one that's unique in that they do a lot of this. They try to avoid the second level. So there has to be a legitimate concern for basically retaining all those earnings and not paying it out to your owners. Okay. So keep that in mind. Well, this business, there was no, there was no reasonable need of the business to basically keep this money. And there was $500,000 of taxable income for this year and paid no dividends and then accumulated earnings in the previous years, $130,000. So again, C corporations, double taxation. Everyone dreads C corporations because of double taxation. So what some C corporations try to do is they try to avoid double taxation and only get one level taxation by not paying out distributions. So no, if you have no distributions that you pay out or no dividends, just like this problem is saying, you can basically try to avoid that owner level tax. You can try to do that, especially if it's um, one owner like here. We have um, one owner. It's a closely held business. Um, actually, I'm sorry. We're not told that it's one owner, but usually closely held businesses, you have one owner or just a few owners. That's what I meant. My apologies. It, but it is common when you see a, a solely owned C corporation and there's no earnings being being paid out, then the IRS will come in a lot of times and scrutinize that. And you better believe you better have a reason to retain those earnings over and over. So this one is getting hit with potentially a 20% accumulated earnings tax, which by the way, depending on the year, um, the dividends that could be subject could be 20%. It could be less. So this actually could be more than that. Now you get up to $250,000 according to this problem. And that could change depending on the year, but I'm telling you the amount for this problem of the $250,000 can of the accumulated earnings can basically be sheltered, can basically be sheltered. So the way we're going to calculate this, it's pretty simple. We're going to take the um, $500,000 of earnings this year. There's multiple ways to do this, but I think the easiest is just to add up the $500,000 for the current year plus the accumulated earnings of $130,000. Think of that as the retained earnings account, the retained earnings account from a tax standpoint. So we add those two numbers together, we're going to get $630,000. $630,000. Think of that as the total earnings based on this tax year, it's being audited by the IRS. We then subtract away this $250,000 amount that we're allowed, this $250,000 amount that we're allowed, and we're gonna get $380,000 is subject to the accumulated earnings tax, the AE tax, which is a 20% rate, 20% rate based on this problem. It could change. Here we're told it's 20%, which again, that's pretty hefty, 20%. So $380,000 times 20%, that's going to be $76,000. Look at that, $76,000. Now, again, there are ways to avoid the accumulated earnings tax. You can uh, create plans. You can basically show a business reason for keeping this money. So the uh, technology industry, 
Think about all the different technology companies out there um, that deal with uh, computers and whatnot. Technology industry is very um, specific in that they do a lot of this. Um, one time in the in looking at past history, Microsoft Corporation was one of the first corporations to do this. And the IRS basically created this rule, the accumulated earnings tax for businesses like Microsoft. And what they did was they said, well, you're just basically not paying out um, any dividends or distributions to your owners to avoid this double taxation, the, you know, the second level of taxation. And that's exactly what happened. They created Congress, IRS. They basically implemented this accumulated earnings tax to basically hit Microsoft and other tech companies with this second level of tax to basically make sure that they pay out distributions. And now what you'll see is that a lot of businesses, the big ones, they do pay out distributions if they don't have any reason for holding this money or if they have too much. And you know, you just can't keep, you know, trillions of dollars just sitting around. You have to pay out some of it eventually. Or if you're not paying out any distributions over, you know, decades, the IRS comes in and says, well, okay, we understand you can put money in for growth and whatnot, but eventually you have to pay out, especially if you've been making profit every year, you have to pay out to your owners. So just keep that in mind. That's basically what the accumulated earnings tax is. And when you're considering C corporations, S corporations, LLCs, taxes, partnerships. The idea is that this is the disadvantage of being a C corporation is that yes, you can plan around this, but there it is within bounds. So keep that in mind. We always talk about when you're looking at C corporations, one way that it's an advantageous over S corporations or LLCs, taxes, partnerships is that if you can avoid the second level of tax, either by for timing reasons or just completely, then it can be beneficial because you might save in taxes, especially if the corporate tax rate is lower than the marginal tax rate of the individual. And we saw examples of that in previous problems. And as you can see here, here, this corporation tried to do that, but uh-oh, it, it got hit with this double taxation through this basically deemed second level of tax called the accumulated earnings tax. Now, before we go, I just want to go over a similar problem. It looks very similar, but it's really different. So here's the example. During a recent IRS audit, the revenue agent decided the Concord family used their closely held corporation, Mystic, to avoid shareholder tax by accumulating earnings beyond the reasonable needs of the business. Mystic's taxable income was $980,000. It paid no dividends and it had no business need to retain income. Mystic's marginal tax rate in the prior years was 34%. Assume the accumulated earnings tax rate is 20% for all applicable years in this problem. Compute Mystic's accumulated earnings tax assuming that it assuming that it had accumulated $3 million after tax income in prior years. Assume that for these years at issue, a corporation is exempt up to $250,000 of accumulated earnings without demonstrating a reasonable business need for the accumulation. So this problem here is a bit different in the way it's worded than our problem we just went through, that we just looked through, like you saw here, with Fruit Tree Inc. It's just a little bit different. It's asking for a little bit different things. It's it's set up just a little bit differently. In the setup of this Fruit Tree Inc. problem, the $250,000, we're able to subtract that away, looking at the amount by adding in the previous $130,000 accumulated $130,000 after tax income in prior years. But in this problem, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna worry about the $3 million after tax income because that amount is just way too high. The idea there is that it's been, the two or $50,000 has been already used. So here's the issue, is that if in prior years, the $3 million number, okay, which is in this example, the $3 million, which you see here, if that number, which is the after-tax income in prior years, if that is greater, that $3 million, is greater than the $250,000 of accumulated earnings without demonstrating a reasonable business need, then if that's greater, then you're not gonna subtract away $250,000. Why? Because in previous years, it's already been exhausted. That $250,000 can be ignored. But in our other problem with fruit tree, if we have, if we look at the previous years, the accumulated $130,000 previous years, if that amount is, equal to or less than the $250,000. I should just say, if it's less than, not equal to. If it's less, then we will add in, we will consider the $250,000 in the problem, but we have to add the current taxable income for the problem, which is the $500,000 plus the $130,000. 
And the idea here is that we haven't used the entire $250,000 amount. That $250,000 amount is for the life of the business. So you see the difference here is that in the fruit tree problem, there's only been $130,000 of accumulated after tax income in prior years. And the idea is that if you use the $250,000 exemption, there's going to be a little bit left from the prior years to go to this year, $500,000. But notice in this problem, which is just a little bit different because of this issue, okay? And I've had students before that get that have trouble with this. So I just want to bring it to your attention of what happens if it's greater. If the prior years, which in this example, again, is a $3 million number, so it's this $3 million. If that amount is greater or equal to the $250,000 amount, so if it's greater than or equal to the $250,000 amount, that means that the $250,000, which is available for the life of the business has been used up. We ignore it for this problem. So in here in this problem with Concord family, we're going to ignore the $250,000, but because again, the prior, the, the prior after tax income in prior years is greater than or equal to the $250,000 number given to you in the problem. And again, in the fruit tree, it was not greater. So what does that mean? That means we're going to ignore the $250,000 and we're going to calculate this ignoring the $250,000. Now, I did the calculation a little different. I take the taxable income, again, ignoring prior years to calculate the accumulated earnings tax. That's what we're asked. We're asked, what is the accumulated earnings tax? Compute the accumulated earnings tax. Okay, and again, there's a 20% rate. So we take the current year's taxable income of $980,000. We're going to calculate the tax on that. I tell you that there is a 34% tax rate. So 980,000 times 34%, we subtract away 330,000, sorry, 333,200. That gives us um, after-tax earnings of $646,800. There's no dividends paid. We're told in the problem there were no dividends. So we don't worry about any dividends. So that means 646,000 minus 800,000, sorry, 646,800 dollars minus zero dividends gives us $646,800 accumulated uh, taxable income. Again, remember, we don't worry about the $250,000 because the $3 million in the prior years has used that up because it's a first come, first serve approach. We're going to multiply that by our 20% rate and we get accumulated earnings tax AET of $129,360. That is our answer in this problem with Concord family. Again, the biggest difference is that the prior year's amount is greater than $250,000. That's really important because I have students that get confused with that. When you compare the problem we went through earlier with fruit tree, again, the key here is that in the prior years, the $130,000 number is smaller than the $250,000 exemption. So that's why we add in and recalculate. As you saw, we did here, we added those together and then we subtracted away the $250,000. The idea is that in that problem above Concord I just showed you, it's already been used in the prior years, so it's irrelevant, you ignore it. And that's why it looks like it's very different, but really it's the same. It's a different problem. I'm sorry, it's a, it, it, it is a different in the way it's worded in terms of the numbers, but really it's the same problem. So the I, same idea applies here. You just have to be really careful, you have to read, you have to understand, hey, that that $250,000 number is for the lifetime and it's been, it's not each year, it's for the life of the business and it's been fully used up. So I hope you enjoy that. This can get really tricky and that exactly shows you how it can be tricky in these situations.